Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. On this beautiful sunny day, Casey Stingle and Dean Mack confer the home plate with Frank Sikori's umpiring team. Right now, how about checking your supply of fine and cold rain gold? Rain gold. Dry. Yes, sir, put some rain gold on ice. It'll add a lot to your enjoyment of the game. Now, here is a beer with a clean, clear taste, brisk and bright all the way through. Rain gold is beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. And say right now would be a good time to light up a cool cigarette. Cool Filter Kings, the cigarette that gives you rich, mellow tobaccos and extra coolness. A refreshing coolness you feel in your throat. Now we'll be approaching game time, so settle back with a tall, cold glass of Rhine Gold and enjoy the long afternoon of baseball from the polo grounds. Right now, the St. Bernadette's Band of the St. Bernadette Shrine Church from Brooklyn has entered from the center field area and will be entertaining the crowd just prior to the start of today's doubleheader. Here are the lineups for Philadelphia. Tony Taylor at second to lead off. Johnny Callison in right field hitting second. Tony Gonzalez in center field batting third. Roy Seavers at first hitting cleanup and the Mets are taking the field. Don Demeter in left field hitting number five. Faye Dalrymple, the catcher, batting number six. Bobby Wyatt at shortstop hitting seventh. Ruben Amaro playing third. He will bat eighth. And Dallas Green will be on the mound batting ninth. Now as Carl Willie approaches the pitching mound to hurl the opener of this twin bill for the New York Mets, the St. Bernadette Shrine Band, the St. Bernadette's Band of the St. Bernadette Shrine Church in Brooklyn is all set for the playing of our national anthem. What a beautiful day we have for the doubleheader. And here, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. St. Bernadette Shrine Church in Brooklyn will be set for action here in just a moment. You know, there are many ways to brew beer. Rain Gold takes the long, slow, costly way, the extra dry way. And that explains why there's such a wonderful difference in the taste of Rain Gold. Yes, sir, dry tells you why. Tells you why Rain Gold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Costly ingredients are one thing, and Rain Gold has them. But you know, it takes more. It takes the skill of 126 years of brewing experience. The extra dry skill that is Rhine Gold's alone. And you can measure the difference that dry makes in taste. Rhine Gold has the happiest taste in beer today. No other beer can quite match it. 
So it's no wonder that millions say, my beer is Rangel the dry beer. But wouldn't you rather discover that difference for yourself? Enjoy the extra refreshment that comes with Rangold Extra Dry Beer. Open up or order up fine coal Rangold right now. Casey Stingle's lineup will have Jimmy Pearsall in center field leading off. Tim Harkness playing first and hitting second. Ron Hunt will be at second base batting third. Duke Snyder in left field hitting cleanup. Eddie Cranepool playing right field and batting number five. Clarence Choo Choo Coleman catching and hitting number six. Charlie Neal playing third and hitting seventh. Al Moran at shortstop batting eighth. And Carl Willey on the mound. Carl shooting for his sixth pitching triumph of the year. Now, Tony Taylor will be leading off for the Philadelphia Phils as we start the doubleheader today. We have an absolutely beautiful day for the Twin Bell. If you haven't finalized your plans as yet, we hope you're planning to join us right here in the polo grounds. Now, Carl Willie has his fan from Choo Choo Coleman. Here's the windup, and the first pitch of the day is popped foul outside first. Hustling over Tim Harkness, he slows up, he's under it. And Tim makes the catch. One away, nobody on. And on the hit now will be Johnny Callison, the right fielder, hitting a 247. Last year, Callison batted an even 300 as the Phillies were the surprise team of the National League a year ago. This year, the surprise team of the National League and Major League Baseball, the Chicago Cubs. And the Cubs will be here on Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Now, Charlie Neal in close at third. Callison, a real good bunner. Breaking ball outside. One ball and no strike. Carl Willie's last outing was on Thursday night in the benefit game at Yankee Stadium. He went four innings against the Yankees, gave up only one hit. That was a home run to Joe Pepitone. Now Carl over the head. In comes his pitch to Callis and a line drive in the air to left field. Here comes Snyder. Duke has it. Two outs. Nobody on. That ball was hit right on a line by Callison but directly toward Duke Snyder, who came straight in to make the catch. Two outs and nobody up. Now the hitter is Tony Gonzalez, batting at 305. His 305 average, the highest in the starting lineup today for Philadelphia. Now Willie over the head, down comes the arm. A little bit under the knees, one ball and no strikes. Harry Peanuts Lowry on the coaching lines at first. Gene Mock running his ball club off the coaching lines at third. Mets defensively are figuring Tony Gonzalez as a full hitter to right field. Now the pitch on the way. Faust foul. He barely got a piece of that one, driving it right into home plate. One ball, one strike. Well, your hardcore baseball fan, the center field bleachers have an ideal day. They can watch their favorite sport and at the same time do a lot of sunbathing. And we have our usual display of Let's Go Mets banners in both the upper deck and the lower deck and out in the center field bleachers. Now Willie out of his windup pitches to Gonzalez, a drive in the air to left field. Back goes the Duke to the edge of the warning path and he takes it. Two left-hand hitters, Johnny Callison and Tony Gonzalez, both hitting hard line drives to the opposite field. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. The score in the middle of the first, the Phillies stepping, and the New York Mets coming to bat. Say, what's your idea of a wonderful day? I think you'd really have to go some to beat a day like this. Being here at the polo grounds for a doubleheader, maybe you prefer an excursion into the country or a day on the sound or maybe a trip to the lake. Or perhaps you're going to spend the day just taking it easy in the backyard with your portable radio. No matter which, any day becomes a little bit more wonderful when you have refreshing Rhine Gold beer on hand. Yes, sir, Rhine Gold is something special when it comes to beer. Dry tells you why. You know, Rhine Gold's way of brewing is long, slow, and costly, but you can measure the difference in taste. Rhine Gold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean clear through. 
Isn't that the way you want your beer to be? You bet. So make Rheingold your beer. Join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. Find out for yourself why Rheingold is New York's largest selling beer. Have a glass right away. Now, Jimmy Pearsall is up against lanky right-hander Dallas Green in the last half of inning number one. Now the pitch on the way, a foul ball, I walked it back over our Rango booth and out of play. Jimmy hitting a 210, right-hand batter. Bobby Wyan, the shortstop, playing him over deep in the hole. And Ruben Amaro, the third baseman, plays him close to the line. Dallas Green winding, in comes his pitch. Off the outside corner, one ball, one strike. This year, Dallas Green, a 28-year-old right-hander from Wilmington, Delaware, has won one and lost one. He has no record against New York. The 1-1 delivery. A line drive to right field to base it for Pearsall. Jimmy Pearsall leading off the last half of number one with a base hit to right field. Dallas Green, lifetime against New York, has won one, lost none. Pitch is over on the inside corner. Green throws a lot of sliders. He has a good live arm. He attended the University of Delaware in Newark, Delaware. He has the size 6'5 and a half. He weighs 210 pounds. Last year with the Phillies, Dallas Green won six and lost six. His earned run average was 3.8. Now the tall right-hander checks the runner. Here's the pitch on the way. A chop off the plate going foul. No play on the count strike two. Well, we can't vouch for the authenticity of this, but we certainly can believe that it did happen. They say when President Kennedy arrived in West Berlin, there were many placards and banners to greet him. And one of the banners, among the many, said, let's go Mets. Now Dallas Green eyes the runner, delivers to Harkness a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Tim Harkness struck out by Green and on the hit now, second baseman Ron Hunt. Ron hitting at 269. He hit one ball real well in the game yesterday, a line drive that Demeter caught one-handed up against the barrier in left field. Brown, a native of Overland, Missouri, which is a su- suburb of St. Louis. Now Dallas Green looking into Clay Dalrymple to pick up his side. Here's all on first, one man down, a throw to first, not in time. Frank Sikori, the crew chief of this umpiring team, works the plate here in the opening game. Big Bill Zakowski from North Walpole, New Hampshire is at first. Paul Pryor at second, and Benny Smith is at third. He holds up on a curve, outside and low, one ball and no strikes. Umpire Benny Smith, a self-styled balance singer of sorts. During his National League playing days, he was a fine receiver with Pittsburgh before knee injuries took him out of the game. He used to sing part of the time behind the plate. Now Green checks his runner. Down comes the pitch. Off the outside corner. Ball two, two and oh. Now Ron Hunt checking with Cookie Lavagetto. Cookie relaying the signs along from the old professor, Casey Stengel. Casey had a wonderful time at the old timers party thrown by President George Weiss last night. Today is a happy birthday to uh, President and General Manager of the New York Mets, George Weiss. Now Dallas Green has the runner. There goes Pierce on a pitch shot. Swung on and missed to peg the second to slide. He's out. They smell that one out. 
Way down, Ripple called for a pitch up. Fired the ball down to Bobby Wine, and they had Pearsall dead to right. Ron Hunt did his dead level best to try and protect the runner. He threw his bat at a pitch that was way outside on a pitch out. Not too many times in baseball will you see him pitch out 2-0. and oh. They really had a premonition on that one. Down two and one now. The pitch by Dallas Green is fouled. Back upstairs and out of play. Two and two. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom half of the first inning and the count. Two and two on Ron Hunt. Now Dallas Green delivers a line drive over second, a base hit going to center field. Clean single to center by Hunt. That brings up Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder over the years with his fine playing and great slugging has earned the acclaim that goes with being a great ball player. Anytime he strides to the plate, electricity just kind of fills the ballpark. Now Dallas Green off the stretch. In comes his pitch. Fastball for a call strike. In the second game today, it'll be Ryan Duran against Tracy Stoller. Jay Hook will open the Chicago Cubs series on Tuesday night, and Al Jackson will face the Cubs on Wednesday afternoon. Inside, ball one. One ball, one strike on Snyder. Next Thursday night, Casey and the Mets will be in Buffalo playing an exhibition game against their top farm club. Kirby Farrell's Buffalo Bisons. They then will open a brief trip in Pittsburgh on Friday night. The 1-1 delivery. A drive hit hard, a base hit to right center field. Ron Hunt around second is on his way to third. There will be no play for him. Runners on first and third. Runners on first and third, two down, and Ralph, the pitch out on 2-0, and oh, in which they nailed Jimmy Pearsall as a big play here now. It certainly was a big play because it erased the chance for the Mets to score, and they have used three hits so far in this inning without scoring. Now Ruben Amaro, the third baseman, coming over to talk to Dallas Green. Snyder's base hit was a hard line drive to right center field. Eddie Cranepool, the hitter. Runners on first and third. Two men down. Mets have three hits here on the last half of the first. Nothing across the plate as yet. Jimmy Pearsall, who singled to right, was cut down, stealing, when they pitched out on 2-0 and and got him. Now Dallas Green comes to the stop. Here's his pitch to Cranepool. Inside and low. One ball and no strikes. No score, last half of inning number one. First game of a doubleheader. We'll be posting all the scores of the other games for you as they come in. Now the pitch on the way. A little bit inside, ball two, it's 2-0. Two and oh. In the American League, they played a day-night doubleheader at Fenway Park yesterday, and the Yankees won both ends of the split doubleheader. Right here, Roy Seavers holding against Duke Snyder. Ron Hunt leading off third, two men down. Count two balls and no strikes on Eddie Cranepool. Dallas Green up in pitching position. Down comes the arm. That's over a strike on the inside corner, two and one. It's hard to imagine... A more beautiful weekend for baseball than we've had this weekend for the Old Timers Day weekend. Here's the pitch on the way. A ground ball hit down toward first. Off the glove, taken by Taylor. He throws to the pitcher, covering out at first. Kind of an unusual play 
Roy Seavers tried to make a backhand play. It went off of his glove, but it caromed directly to the second baseman, Tony Taylor, who then whipped the ball to the pitcher covering in time for the out. And Roy Seavers gets an assist on the play. Side retired in the first. No runs, three hits, no errors, and two left on. At the end of one inning, the score, the Phillies nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Well, the Chicago Cubs will be opening a two-game series against the New York Mets on Tuesday night. Jay Hook will pitch Tuesday night. On Wednesday afternoon, it'll be Al Jackson who went the route to beat the Phillies 3-1 to in the opening game of this series. The Cubs today are playing at home at Wrigley Field against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The probable pitchers are the Deacon, Vern Law, and right-hander, Glenn Hobby. There are a lot of reasons, I am sure, as to why the Cubs are so improved over a year ago. They're only three and a half games out of first place, and it won't be too long until this season is half gone. Ralph, their pitching has really been remarkable. Ellsworth has done a great job for them, and he has proven to be one of the top left-handers in baseball with his fine start this season. Looks as though he can reverse his record of last year when he lost 20 games and won only nine. He's on his way to a 20-game year. He has already won as many games this year as he won all last year. That's a pretty good start, Bob. This fellow this year, Ralph, seems to be getting just about every pitch right down around the knees. Well, he knows how to pitch, and he certainly has come up with a good spotter to help him along with the curve and fastball. Now Roy Seaver's up against Carl Willie, and the pitch is outside, one ball and no strikes. I don't imagine Bob Kennedy, the head coach, or manager, if you prefer, of the Cubs would trade his two short men in the bullpen for any in baseball either. Now the pitch on the way, a drive caught by Charlie Neal. Ooh, that's the third line drive in a row. Hit off Carl Willie. That one was a blistering drive. Charlie just had to reach up quickly and make a one-hand catch. Allison and Gonzalez lined out to Snyder as the last two men retired in the first inning. One away and nobody on. Now Don Demeter is hitting. Demeter, a good-looking batter. He has a lot of power. They play him around toward left. He had a home run in the ninth inning yesterday. Swing and a missed strike one. Last year, Don Demeter really came of age as an established National League star. In the dirt, one ball and one strike. Demeter this year batting at 288 with 12 home runs to lead the Phillies. 37 RBIs, one behind the club leader, Wes Covington. Now Carl Willie out of his wind. Up in comes his pitch. A swing and a miss on a breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. Usually you're not nearly as concerned at having a few balls hit hard off Carl Willie as you are in watching his control. When his control is good, he is a tough pitcher to beat. One-two delivery, a swing, and a miss. He struck him out with a low-breaking ball. Carl has the best earned run average among the New York Mets pitchers. This weekend, the balloting took place among the National League clubs for the All-Star cast. Of course, the managers... Alvin Dark and Ralph Alk will be selecting the pitchers. Now Clay Dalrymple is up and it's fouled back upstairs and out of play. Undoubtedly, Alvin Jackson and Carl Willie will be given a lot of consideration by Al Dark for the All-Star game, which will be in Cleveland this year. It'll be played on the 9th of July. On the 10th of July, a night game here on the Polo Grounds, and this will make up a rain dot game against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, Willie Winding, in comes his pitch. A changeup, low, one ball, one strike. Carl, the only member of the pitching staff with an earned run average of less than three earned runs for nine innings. His earned run average came up quite a bit when he was hit hard in the first inning in his last start at St. Louis. A high fly ball, it deep to center field. Back goes Pearsall, he's getting under it. And he makes the catch in straightaway center. No runs, no hits, no errors, and men left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the score, Phillies nothing, and the Mets nothing. Now, 
from Rheingold comes a brand new idea in beer containers. It's called the chug And it's the first and only beer container with a top that's so easy to open and a wide mouth that's so convenient to drink from. To open the chug pull the tab on top straight out, then straight up, and pull off the top. No opener, no glasses, no deposits, no fooling. chug holds the same amount of delicious Rheingold extra dry as the 12-ounce can. Cost the same, too. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. chug is a new way to buy beer. Better get some today. chug what you say. What a great way to drink Rheingold beer. Your dealer has Rheingold in the new chug now. Ask him for it. What a great way to drink Rheingold beer. Second, 2 2 Coleman leads off for the New York Mets. Dallas Green delivers to Choo Choo a line drive into center field, a clean base hit. Choo Choo jumping right on the first pitch. It was a curveball, and he laced it into center. Mets in the opening inning had three singles off Dallas Green. Four out of the first six to come up have hit safely. And as a result, the phone is ringing out in the Philadelphia bullpen. And we're going to get some warm-up action. Play down, Ripple out on the mound now, talking to Dallas Green. And I believe the pitcher that Gene Mack wants to warm up was in the clubhouse at the moment. They're waiting for him to come out. Charlie Neal is up against Dallas Green, last half of the second, one on and nobody out. It'll be a left-hander, Chris Short, starting to warm up. Neal holds up, and the pitch is over, strike one. Right here, no score, last half of the second inning. Clarence Coleman on first. Nobody out, and the ball is lobbed over to first now. Here are the warm-ups at St. Louis for the Dodgers, Johnny Padres, and for St. Louis, Ernie Berlio. A swing and a foul tip, strike two to Charlie Neal. Berlio, the ace of the staff in St. Louis, has won eight and lost two. Johnny Padres has won four while losing six. San Francisco at Milwaukee, Jack Sanford goes for his tenth against Warren Spahn, and Spahnie is trying for his tenth. Veteran Warren Spahn is off to perhaps the finest start of his Major League career. Over the years, he's been a slow starter and a great finisher. Foul tipped off the mask of umpire Frank Sicori. Double header is underway in Cincinnati. Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Jim Umbright pitching against Bob Perkey. Yankees nothing, Red Sox nothing at the end of one. Jim Bowden, nine and two against Earl Wilson, six and five. Now Dallas Green checks the runner. Two strike delivery. A slow grounder hit back toward the mound. The play is going to second. They have one. That's all they can get. No chance for a throw to first by Bobby Wyatt. Now one out and one on, Charlie Neal reaching safely on the force play on the hitter is Al Moran. Cleveland won, the White Sox nothing at the end of an inning and a half, two innings and a half, first game of two. Ray Herbert, who got off to a great start and then has gone into a pitching slump, against Jack Crayley. Crayley has been red hot since coming to Cleveland from Minnesota. Baltimore at Minnesota, Steve Barber against Dick Stigman. Ground ball hammered on the left side of a dam and cut off by Amaro. He throws the second for one on the first, not in time. Good play by Ruben Amaro, the third baseman, as he cut across the edge of the infield grass to make a glove hand grab on a slow bouncer. Two outs and one on now in the home second. No score in the game, and Carl Willie stepping in to hit. Carl has three hits and 28 times up.
What better time than right now to order up or open up another Rangold Extra Dry? Swing and a miss, drink one. Dallas Green checks his runner. Breaking ball over, a call strike. Al Moran is on first with two men down. Now the two-strike delivery. A swing and a miss, he struck him out. Side retired in the home second. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left on. Now two innings complete in the opener of the Twin Bill. Phillies nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Well, we're happy to say the first Saturday night game of the season will be at the Polo Grounds on July the 6th when the New York Mets meet the Pittsburgh Pirates. It should be a very, very entertaining evening. It will be both date night and variety night. There will be entertainment beginning at 6.30, and this will be the first time the Mets have staged a variety night, and there'll be fun for everybody. Top name talent will be entertaining. The Mets will also play the Pirates on Friday afternoon, July the 5th, and Saturday afternoon, July 7th. So the Pirates series here in New York will be the 5th, 6th, and 7th of July with the Saturday game, a night game, and it is variety night and date night. Now before Ralph Kainer takes us along to the third inning, we'll pause for station identification. 810 in your dial, WGY's Connectedy, where the time is 228. The weather is sunny and warm. The temperature is 78 degrees. All set to go here in the top of the third. This is Rob Conner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from the Polar Grounds. No score in the game. Coming up here against Carl Woolley to lead off the third for the Phillies. Will be Bob Wine, the shortstop. He'll be followed by Ruben Amaro and the pitcher Dallas Green. Willie so far has pitched the six men, retired them all. Wine, a right hand batter, batting 223. And his first pitch is just outside ball one. Carl going with a slider missing on the outside part of the plate. Carl Willie, a right-hander, into the windup, and the pitch back to wine. Fastball popped up back of home play. 2-2 Coleman coming back. He might have a try. He's waiting, and he makes the catch out number one. That will bring up Ruben Amaro playing at third base. He's a right-hand batter, batting 204. No runs, no hits. The Mets have no runs and four hits. The Mets used up three hits in the first inning and couldn't score. First pitch tomorrow, a strike called, a slider in there about letter high. No balls and one strike. Charlie Neal at third base, even with the bag in case of a bunt. Here's the pitch back to the plate. Curveball lying to left field, deep out there. Snyder's by the wall, and he makes the catch. So, two quick outs for Carl Willie, and he'll work now to Dallas Green. Carl has retired eight men so far in this ballgame in succession. And Dallas Green coming up has one hit and ten times up. He bats from the left-hand side. This is the first game of two, so if you're around this way, why don't you come on out? Plenty of good seats available, a perfect day for baseball. In the second game, it'll be Tracy Stoddard against Ryan Duran. First pitch to Green, a curveball, two low, ball one. Mets will close out their short homestand on Wednesday afternoon. They'll play the Cubs on Tuesday night and Wednesday. Pitch back, a slider, a called strike. Then the Mets will go to Pittsburgh and Chicago. Before returning here against the Pittsburgh Pirates. 
Now at 1-1, Carl Woolley comes back to Dallas Green. The curve is low, ball two. Frank Sicori, home plate umpire, shaking no on the question as to whether or not Green had swung far enough to have a strike call. Two balls and one strike. Willie back to work, and the pitch is a fastball. It's a call strike for strike two, and that pitch definitely up in the new strike zone. A lot of question as whether as to whether or not the strike zone, the new strike zone, was being used much by the pitchers and umpires. Right there, you got to say yes. Curveball swung on and missed strike three, and Carl Willie strikes out his second man, and that retires the side. Three up and three turned away by the right-hander, and the score at the end of two and a half innings to play. The Phillies nothing. The New York Mets nothing. Well, now here's a chance for you to be the umpire. Picture this Ryan Gold riddle. Runners on first and second with one out. Got it? Okay, now. Batter off to high fly towards short, and the umpire correctly calls infield fly. But the ball coming down strikes the front runner standing a few feet off second. How would you rule? Is the runner out? Is the batter out? Well, the answer to this one is that it's a double play. Both the batter and the base runner are out. If the runner had been standing on second, he would have been safe. How'd you do? Well, you can find that ruling over a glass or two of refreshing Rheingold. You know, Rheingold just naturally goes with baseball. Goes with all good times because Rheingold has a taste all its own. It's beer as beer should taste. And Dry tells you why. It tells you that Ryan Gold has proved the long, slow, costlier way for a flavor that is brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Why don't you enjoy some right now? Bottom half of the third inning, no score in the game, and Jimmy Pearsaw coming to bat for the second time. Jimmy singled the center field his first time up to raise his average to 220. Right hand batter with no home runs, eight runs batted in. Mets had three hits in the first inning, but couldn't score a run. Here's the first pitch to Jim here in the third, and there's a fly ball to center field. Gonzalez moves in, stops, and comes in a couple of more steps, and he makes the catch. So in one pitch here in the third, Dallas Green has one out, and now he'll work to Tim Hartner. Tim struck out swinging his first time up. He's batting 217. Tim, a left-hand batter, and the first pitch is a fastball that's just outside for ball one. Dallas Green comes right off the top of this fastball. Once in a while, we'll go sidearm. He struck out Carl Willie on a sidearm curveball. Now the 1-0 pitch, curveball off the top, too low for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. No score in the game, one out here in the bottom half of the third. Two balls, no strikes. The big right-hander back with a curveball to tie for ball three. And this time, Green, who thought he had the pitch before, now argues a little more strenuously on the mound with Frank Chicory, the home plate umpire. Three balls, no strikes. The on-deck batter, Ron Hunt, a right-hand batter. And Green now 3-0. Works outside for ball four. That is the first walk issued by Green, and again the pitch was close. That will bring up Ron Hunt. Ron singled the center field his first time up to raise his average to 273. He leads the club in batting. Ron, a right-hand batter. Now looking down at Cookie Lavagetto. Jimmy Pearsall was thrown out on a hit-and-run play. But Ryan couldn't get his bat on, on a pitch out in the first inning. Here's the first pitch. It's pulled foul. Strike one. Ron tried to protect the runner going down when the pitch was outside by throwing his bat at the ball, but he still couldn't get a piece of it. He's a fine young ball player with all the instincts to be an outstanding major league player. Ron's certainly in the contest for Rookie of the Year honors and also Rookie All-Star second baseman. He's got tough competition in Pete Rose. Now the one-strike pitch to Ron. It's low, ball one. Mm-hmm. 
Dallas Green, six foot five, two hundred and ten pounds. He's a tall one on the mound. He has a lifetime record of twelve wins and seventeen losses. One and all against the Mets, and this year he is one and one in the season. Now the one one pitch. Outside for ball two. Fastball down low also. And the count now, two balls and one strike. Phillies, no runs, no hits. The Mets have no runs and four hits. One out here in the bottom half of the third inning. Jim Harkness being held on at first base by Roy Severs. He has a short lead. And now the stretch by Dallas Green in the pitch. It's low again, a fat ball. And that runs the count to three balls and one strike. The on-deck batter, Duke Snyder. Three balls, one strike. Green taking time, taking the signs from Clay Dalrymple. Now the pitch with the runner going, and the pitch is low for ball four. So two walks in a row, the first two issued by Dallas Green, and Duke Snyder will come to bat. And there's the sign out for the pitching bullpen for Chris Short to get up and throw again. He was up throwing before. Runners at first and second base, one man out, Duke Snyder the batter. Duke single to right center field his first time up. He is batting 213. And the first pitch to Duke. Find in the right field a base set. Here comes Tim Harkness. He'll score. Going to third base is Ron Hunt. And the throw is cut off by Roy Severs. And holding at first base is Duke Snyder. with a second base hit has put the Mets out in front one nothing here and the Mets now with runners at first and third for Duke that run batted in his 26th of the year conference on the mound between Ruben Amaro and Dallas Green the batter is Eddie Grayfold here comes Gene Mock so Mock instructing Amaro to take time on the mound to allow Chris Short to warm up. Short's a left-hander, and Eddie Crane pulled the batter in the batter's box is a left-hand batter. So we might see a pitching change right here. Gene Mock, the manager of the year last year for the Philadelphia Phillies when they finished in seventh place. Phillies last year for the first time in quite some time won over 80 ball games. They played over 500 ball last year, and Gene receiving the Manager of the Year award. While we wait for Gene to make up his mind, here's Bob with the scores. Okay, Ralph, the warm-ups at Chicago, the Deacon Vern Law against Glenn Hobby. Right now, Gene Mock is returning to the dugout. Dallas Green is staying in the game, unless Mock is just stalling for a little bit more time to give short additional warm-up time. Johnny Padres and Ernie Brolio in the Dodgers St. Louis game. Harvey Keen has homered at Milwaukee to put Giants in front of uh, Milwaukee one to nothing in the first inning. Okay, Ralph. All right, Bob. It's Dallas Green now working to Eddie Greenbull, a left-hand batter. Chuchu Coleman, a left-hand batter, is in the on-deck circle. Dallas has given up one run in five hits. The Mets lead one nothing, and the first pitch to Greenbull is a fastball swung on a miss, strike one. Eddie hit. Into a ground out his first time up. The ball deflected by Roy Severs and picked up by the second baseman. And Tony Taylor completed the play to the pitcher covering at first base. That has been hitting the ball well of late. Now the one strike delivery. Pass ball looked at, strike two. One man out. The Duke goes and the pitch is swung on and missed. Here's the throw through to second base in the dirt. Here comes the runner from third. The throw back is in time and he is out. An attempt at a double steal, and Ron Hunt breaking in from third base after the throw went on through to the shortstop is thawed out on the return throw to the plate. 
in the inning for the Mets. One run on one hit. There were no errors, and one man was left on base. And the score at the end, the three innings of play. The Mets won, the Phillies nothing. Well, right there, a fine play. Pulled off by the Philadelphia Phillies. And you'll be seeing baseball like that throughout the rest of the year. This game here today for the Mets, their 71st game of the year. So still half a season of baseball coming your way. And don't forget, if you would like to keep track of the Mets and stay right on top of their personal lives and their inside outs of baseball, you can do so by purchasing the Met Yearbook. All you have to do is send 50 cents to Met Yearbook, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York, and you'll receive back in short time a yearbook that contains over 100 pictures of the New York Mets, also stories about individual ball players, stories about Casey Stengel, and especially a nice feature story on the new Shea Stadium with the Stadiorama scoreboard that will be there. It's going to be really something. As Bob Murphy said, it does just about everything out there but tell your fortune. That's Met Yearbook. Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Send 50 cents, and you'll receive yours back. Well, we're moving to the top of the fourth. The Mets on top, 1-0. They won the first game of this series by a score of 3-1 as Al Jackson picked up the win. Yesterday, the Phils, behind the fine pitching of Ray Culp, shut out the Mets, 2-0. So this game, the third game, and the Mets in front. First batter for the Phillies here in the fourth inning will be the leadoff man, Tony Taylor. On the mound, Carl Willie in his first pitch to Taylor has looked at a called strike. Tony fouled out his first time up. He's batting 272. Now the right-hander back with a fastball. There's a swing and a miss, strike two. Carl has retired nine in a row since the start of the ball game. This year, Carl Woolley has pitched two shutouts, both of them two hitters, one against the Giants, the other against the Cubs. Now the windup and the two-strike pitch to Tony Taylor. He takes it low, ball one. Willie going with a slider down around the knees, the ball breaking just low. One ball, two strikes. Pitch back, a fastball just inside. Two balls, two strikes. Juju Coleman thought the pitch was on the plate. Frank Sicuri, the home plate umpire, having trouble with both catchers in the ball game so far. Frank, an outfielder in his heyday in baseball. Now 2-2, Willie comes back to Taylor, and he gets him swinging. Slider down around the knees, a perfect pitch for strikeout number four for Carl Willie. Make that number three. Carl has struck out Don Demeter and the pitcher Dallas Green prior to Tony Taylor. Now with one out, Johnny Callison comes up. John lying to left field his first time up. He's batting 246. And the first pitch to Callison is a curveball, a swing and a miss for strike one. Carl had a fine pitching performance against the Yankees in the Mayor's Trophy game. He gave up one run and one hit, and the one hit was a home run by Pepitone after the game was more or less solid away. He came in with a 3-1 fastball in the ninth inning, and Pepitone hit a home run. Here's the pitch back to the plate. One ball, one strike. Mets won that game 6-2. Right here, they lead 1-0 with one out in the top of the fourth inning. Willie, a right-hander, to Johnny Callison, the left-hand batter. And the pitch, low inside for ball two. Two balls and one strike. Charlie Neal defending closely at third base. Callison beat out a bunt for a base hit in yesterday's game. There's a foul ball, the ball going out of play. And that bunt started the rally for the Phillies that scored their first run, and they won the ball game as a result of Johnny Callison beating out that bunt. Now Neal moving back 
with a two-strike count on Callison. Two balls, two strikes. Met's other run came in a home run by Don Demeter, his fourth of the year. His twelfth of the year. Now at 2-2, the pitch to Callison. Lying in the left center, a base hit. Could go for two. Here comes Snyder over. Gets by him, knocking the ball down at Parasol. Callison's going to try for three. He'll make it standing up, and he's being held up at third base. A three-base hit for Johnny Callison. Well, you can tell by the way that ball skipped in the outfield that the outfield is fast. The warm weather and the dry weather making that grass nice and juicy, and that ball just skidded right on by Duke Schneider in left center field before he had a chance to get to it. That's the first hit off Carl Willie, and now the Phils have the time run at third base with one out, and the batter is Tony Gonzalez. Infield being moved in. Gonzalez batting 303, and the first pitch is high for ball one. Charlie Neal inside at third base. Pitch back to the plate, high again, ball two. Al Moran, even with the line running between second and third. Ron Hunt, just a step in back of the grass at second base. And Tim Harkness, a step in back of the bag at first. Infield pulled in to cut off the time run. Now Willie into the windup and the 2-0 pitch fouled away for strike one. Willie had retired 10 men in a row before the three base hit by Johnny Callison. Two balls, one strike, one man out. Top of the fourth inning, the Mets lead 1 0. The pitch is bounced to short. Here comes the runner from third. The play home is close, and he is out. <laughs> Al Moran making the play home as Johnny Callison tried to beat that slow bouncing ball to the shortstop. And the play was a good play by Choo Choo Coleman. He had to dig the throw out of the dirt and make the tag. So the threat of the run he raced from third base, exchanging on the base pass, though at first base is Tony Gonzalez on the fielder's choice and the batter's Roy Severs. Severs batting 233. He lined out his first time up. And the first pitch to Roy is taken inside a fastball for ball one. ball, no strikes. Mets lead 1-0. And the pitch back to Seavers, low and outside. Two balls, no strikes. Roy has two hits in the series. He's hit the ball well. Although his season average is certainly below his norm at 233. Now Willie back, and there's a high fly ball to left field. Coming over is Snyder. He's waiting now as the ball drifts to his left, and he just makes the catch as the ball flew away from him. Ball tailed off towards center field at the last minute, and Duke had to move to his left to make the catch. That retires the side in the inning for the Phils. No runs on one hit. There were no errors, and one man was left in the score at the end of three and a half innings of play. The Mets won the Phillies, nothing. Juju Coleman coming to bat and getting to find him for that play at home plate to cut off a run for the Phillies. The Mets lead one nothing. They're batting here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. On the mound for the Phillies, Dallas Green. And the first pitch to Juju Coleman. A bunt attempt, the ball foul back of home plate. It's going to drop foul. Coming back, 
Clay Dalrymple, but he couldn't get to it. Juju had a base hit his first time up. He's batting 191. Boy, old Clay has got a little skin thrown, showing through in the top of his head. He's not that old either. But uh, Dalrymple certainly far behind Andy Semenik, who used to glue his hat on. Also Dick Grote. Here's the one strike pitch. It's high for ball one. Semenik in the old-timers game in Philadelphia the other day had a home run. They brought back the Wiz kids of 1950 to play the current Philly team. Now the 1-1 pitch, a let-up that's fouled away. And Andy Semenik had a home run. Dick Sisler had a double off the scoreboard. And Richie Ashburn was 0 for 2. One ball, two strikes. Got a kick out of Greenberg who came out here yesterday to play in the old-timers game. There's a foul back on the screen. Count stays at one and two. Hank came up to the plate and he went through all of his famous stretching exercises that he did before Rocky Calavito ever started. He got up there, took that big stance. They threw him one pitch. He swung all his might, popped it up back of the catcher, and the catcher caught the ball. That was it. Now at one two, Coleman lines one to left center field. Here comes Gonzalez, and it drops in front of him a base hit. Well, Chuchu now two in a row, both to center field, and the Mets have a runner at first base with no one out, and Charlie Neal coming up. Well, manager Casey Stingle has been working with great archer on Chuchu Coleman to get him to hit the ball to left field and center field, and Chuchu has been picking up right along. He's really learning to go the other way. Charlie Neal 0 for 1 in the first pitch that Charlie does not come off. There's a lob throw to first base. Coleman back. Now the pitch is fouled down the right field side into the lower deck. A broken bat for Charlie Neal. Strike one. Neal batting 231. Charlie had a six-game hitting streak stopped in the first game of this series. He has been hitless so far. strike count as Dallas Green takes the signs from Clay Dalrymple. Mets lead 1-0. No one out bottom half of the fourth inning. And the pitch back to Neal is a call strike at the knee. The fastball for strike two. strike John Green sets looks at Coleman and comes to the plate and there's a ball hit the right field Johnny Callison moves in calls for it and he makes the catch with one out Al Moran steps in Al hit into a force play rounding down to third his first time up he's batting 186 Al is a man who cut off the runner coming in from third base on the ground ball Leaving the Mets in front 1-0 with one out here in the fourth inning. It's a fact, smokers. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. Now throw to first base. Coleman gets back. No tag made by Sievert. Green in the set position and to the plate. It's inside ball one. One ball, no strikes. And the next pitch is on the outside corner. Fastball. One ball, one strike. We 
one going out to left field. A perfect day for baseball. Now at 1-1, the pitch is high for ball two. Green with a good, strong fastball. Missing just above the letters. Phillies put Dennis Bennett back in the active list. He was out all spring and also the first part of the year. With a broken arm, he received in an automobile accident. Two balls and one strike. Green back to the plate, and it's outside. And once again, Green falls behind. The count, three balls and one strike. On at first base, Chuchu Coleman, one man out. The on-deck batter is the pitcher, Carl Willie. the pitch, a curveball, low for ball four. That moves Coleman on down to second base. Moran gets first base free. The third walk by Dallas Green, and the batter will be Carl Willie. Carl struck out his first time up on a sidearm curveball. Now, once again, we're going to get some action in the bullpen as Gene Mock gives the sign to Ruben O'Mara by going to his mouth and moving his hands. And O'Mara comes in to talk, which is exactly what Gene Mock wanted him to do, with the pitcher, Dallas Green. This will give the pitcher, Chris Short, time to warm up in the bullpen. Now we have a right-hander getting up in place of Chris Short. Johnny Boozer warming up. He was up yesterday. Carl Willie, the batter. The infield looking for the bunt. One man out. And Dallas Green, after waiting on the pitching rubber, backs off. Chichu Coleman at second base. Al Moran at first. And now Green spins around, chasing Coleman back to second. Willie out of the batter's box. Time call. Now time in. And the pitch to Willie. Hit right through the middle to the second baseman. He picks it up. Throws to the shortstop covering the second base for the first part of the double play. The return to Roy Seavers in time for a double play to retire the side. In the inning, no runs on one hit. No errors. And one man left on. And the score at the end of four innings of play. The New York Mets won. The Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Now we'll pause for station identification. You're tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Met station. The time is three minutes past three o'clock and the temperature is 81 degrees. Bob, how about the scores? Can you bring us up to date? Okay, Ralph, the Chicago Cubs got four runs in the first inning and chased Vernon Law. At the end of one, Cubs four, Paris nothing, Glenn Hobby pitching for Chicago. Dick Grode hit a two-run homer in the first inning at St. Louis. The Cardinals lead the Dodgers 2-0. Padres out and Miller in. Brolio pitching for St. Louis. Harvey Keene and Tom Haller have homered at Milwaukee. The Giants now lead the Braves 3-1 while hitting in the top of the second. Jack Sanford against Warren Spahn. Johnny Edwards hit a three-run homer and Cincinnati leads Houston 4-0 after four and a half innings. Don McMahon relieved Jim Umbright for Houston. Bob Perky trying to win his second game of the year, pitching for Cincinnati. And that's the first game of a doubleheader. In the American League, the Yankees got three in the fourth inning. They lead the Red Sox 4-0 at the end of three and a half. LeMay relieved Wilson, Bouton pitching for New York. Cleveland won the White Sox nothing after five and a half. Ray Herbert against Jack Craley. Al Smith homered, nobody on in the second at Minnesota. The Orioles lead the Twins 1-0 at the end of an inning and a half. Steve Barber against Dick Stigman. Later today, Washington will be at Los Angeles. That's the complete rundown on the scores of the other games, and right here, Don Demeter leads off the fifth inning with New York in front, one to nothing. Carl Louie into his windup. The pitch to Demeter, low and outside, one ball and no strikes. Demeter went down swinging his first time up.
Now Chu's Choo Choo provides that low target. A ground ball squibbler down the first baseline. Harkness racing for it. He'll put the tag on Demeter who tries to slide around him. He's out. Harkness had to come up the line to field the grounder, and Demeter tried to slide under and away from the tag, but Harkness got him. Tim did not have time to go back to the base and step on it. One away and nobody on. The batter, Clay Dalrymple. Dalrymple hitting at 254. Fly to center field his first time up. Now Carl Willey, as he signed from Choo Choo, delivers and he's hit by the pitch. Curve that hung and came inside. Hit Dalrymple as he spun away on the back of the shoulder. Now the Phils have the tang run on first, one down. The hitter is the shortstop, Bobby Wine. Wine hitting at 222 on the year. He fouled out to Choo Choo his first time up. Now the Mets have the infield a straight away at double play depth. The outfield straight away against Wine, a slender right-hand batter. Pitch thrown by Carl Willie. He bunts, but it's foul going off to the left. No play. The Mets have a day off tomorrow and play the Cubs Tuesday night and Wednesday. Next Thursday night, they'll play Kirby Farrell's Buffalo Bisons, an exhibition game in Buffalo. Now Willie up in pitching position. Delivers to Wyan a fly ball into right center field. Fairly deep. Eddie Crane pool ambling back. Eddie's there and makes the catch. Now there are two away in the visiting fifth inning. And that's in front of one to nothing. And the batter is Ruben Amaro. Amaro hit the ball hard his first time up. A line drive that Snyder caught in left field. on the mound for New York. Tim Harkness holding it against the runner, Clay Dalrymple. Now Willie comes to the set position. Delivers a fastball inside at the letters. One ball, no strikes. Ron Hunt and Al Moran just about straight away against tomorrow. And it's popped foul outside third. Charlie Neal has a play on it beyond the coaching lines. Makes the grab, and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on. So they've come halfway in the opener of the twin bill at the end of four and a half innings. The score, the Mets won, and the Phillies nothing. Well, if you're like many smokers, you'll probably switch your brand of cigarettes once, twice, or even more this year. Now, here's a suggestion to save yourself a lot of trouble. Change the cool filter kings now. Why? Because no matter what cigarette you're now smoking, you're not smoking cool enough unless you're smoking cool. Only cool gives you rich, mellow tobaccos and extra coolness. Extra coolness you can feel in your throat from the very first cigarette in the morning to your last cigarette at night. You'll enjoy the refreshing taste that only cool can give you. So come all the way up to Cool Filter Kings with a pure white filter. Buy a carton. By the time you're ready to buy another, you'll never have to change brands again. Jimmy Parasol leads off against Dallas Green in the last half of the fifth inning. The Mets have hit Dallas Green hard, but they have been unable to bunch their hits. Duke Snyder has driven in the only run of the game. A drive foul off to the right, sliced into the upper deck and out of play. Jimmy singled to right field in the first inning, but with a count of 2-0. and oh, The Phillies, since the play out, pitched out on 2-0, and oh, and Parasol was caught stealing. 
Here's the pitch on the way. A fly ball hit right down the right field line. If it stays fair, it might do it. Let's watch. Home run for Jimmy Pearsall. Pearsall is running the bases backwards. Jimmy Pearsall has said that when he hit home run number 100 in the major leagues, he was going to run the bases backwards, and he's doing it. Here comes Pearsall from third to home now, running the bases backwards. Hope the run counts. Pearsall's first National League home run, the 100th home run of his Major League career, Jimmy has been saying in a kidding way that when I hit number 100, I'm going to run the bases backwards, and he did. Now Tim Harkness up. And the pitch is inside, one ball and no strike. Well, Jimmy is a man of his word. He has said all along, when I do hit number 100, I'm going to go around the bases backwards. He did. He made pretty good time going around there, too. Now the pitch to Harkness. Foul ball off his ankle going down the first baseline. One ball and one strike. Gersall, a right-hand batter, hit an opposite field home run. He hit it right down the right field line. A fly ball homer. Rio Polo grounds home run. Pitched by Dallas Green, taken high by Tim Hartness, two balls and a strike. Mets two and the Phillies nothing, bottom half of the fifth inning. The man from Waterbury, Connecticut, Jimmy Pearsall, a colorful citizen if there ever was one, and a man of his word. Pearsall did a marvelous job of adding to the entertainment of the Old Timers Day game yesterday. Ground ball hammered down to first. Seavers flipping to Donald Green, covering in time for the out. Jimmy added a great deal to the overall fun when he showed that he was a real good sport, and when he was asked if he would umpire the old-timers game and put on the umpire uniform, he gladly did so, and he really helped to make it a lot more fun. One away and nobody out. Now the hitter is Ron Hunt, New York leading 2-0. We're in the last half of number five. Ron has singled a center and drawn a walk. the wind up down comes the pitch ground ball hit down to third foul ball foul ball just foul two played by Ruben Amaro standing on the bag but reaching over the line one thing about it Pearsall certainly didn't hold the game up any by going around the bases backwards because he traveled at a pretty fast pace Nobody on. Ron Hunt waiting. Pitched by Green. A squibber hits slowly down the first baseline. Green is up with it. He pegs on deceivers, and there are two away in the home fifth inning. Now the hand is for Duke Snyder. Duke has two for two. Single to right center in the first, and single to right driving home. The first run of the game, Tim Harkness in the third inning. Mets two runs on seven hits and no errors. Philadelphia no runs, one hit and no errors. Green over the head. Down comes the arm. Breaking ball on the inside corner. A call strike and Duke didn't like the call. Have a pitch on the way. Inside and low, one ball, one strike. We have a banner painted a bright red in the upper deck. The letters are in white. I don't know whether it's a statement of fact or asking a question. It says simply, Duke hit a homer. So it's Duke hit a homer or Duke hit a homer. He can work it either way, I guess. In for a strike, one ball and two strikes. Banner draped in center field a while ago said, We, I'm a Mets fan, I speak Stingley. 
Now the one-two delivery. Duke lays off, and it's high. Two balls and two strikes. Lindsay saw two beautiful little blonde girls who had a banner saying, Blondes love Mets. Pitch is over. Strike three calls. Snyder called out on strikes. For Dallas Green, his fourth strikeout, side retired in the fifth inning. One run, one hit, no errors, and none left on. Now five innings complete, and the score, the Mets two, and the Phillies nothing. Well, you know, you've heard us say it's beer as beer should taste. Well, think of that for a minute. Isn't that what you want in a beer? Don't you want a beer that's refreshingly dry to the taste, with a flavor that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through? Well, that is Rangold. Rangold is brewed to be just that. Brewed of the choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costlier way. Rangold is everything you look for in beer. Dry tells you why. Yes, sir, extra dry means Rangold's a better beer. It's a wonderful beer, and extra dry means Rangold beer is more refreshing. The more refreshing a beer is, the more you're going to enjoy it. So enjoy fine, cold Rangold beer. Join the millions who have made Rangold New York's largest selling beer. Now Gene Mock is sending Frank Torrey to the plate to bat for Dallas Green as the game goes into the sixth inning. We'll have a new pitcher coming on for Philadelphia in the last half of the sixth. Left-hander Chris Short has started to warm up again. He warmed up in the early part of the ball game. then Gene switched to right-hander Johnny Boozer. Now has gone back to left-hander Chris Short. Torrey, left-hand batter, feet wide apart. And he whacks it foul. Here's Chuchu on the dead run coming toward the dugout. They're going to have to stop him. It goes into the crowd, a foul ball. Sally Hemus hurried up to the top of the dugout to be ready to brace Chuchu's fall in the event he didn't get checked. Torrey, the batter. Nobody on, nobody out. Sixth inning. Mets lead 2-0. A foul pop-up toward the backstop. Chuchu's on the run again. May or may not have a play. He doesn't. It's on the screen. with a two-strike count on Frank Torrey. Strike delivery. Swing and a miss. He got him with a curveball down around the knees. That is the fourth strikeout for Carl Willey. On not one occasion, but in four different ball games this year, Carl has struck out eight men. The hitter is Tony Taylor, and the pitch is under the knees. One ball and no strikes. The banner over the exit in the lower right center field corner says, We're for Willie, the Yankee killer. Now the pitch back, Carl. Under the knees again to Tony Taylor. Ball two, two and oh. Lefty Chris Short warming up for the Phillies. The opener of the doubleheader is in the sixth inning with New York in front, two to nothing. Carl behind on the count. The 2-0 delivery. Way inside. It's ball three, and he falls behind on Taylor, 3-0. Now Chuchu gets a new ball from Frank Sicori. Carl didn't like the feel of that one after going behind on the hitter, 3 and nothing. Three and oh 
Alan Taylor, Johnny Callison on deck, and then Tony Gonzalez. Carl into his windup. Now his pitch. That's over. Strike one call. Three and one. Three-one delivery. A drive in the air to right field. Running for it is Eddie Cranepool. He can't get it. The ball bounces away from him out into distant right center field. On his way to third is Tony Taylor. Here's the throw coming in to Hunt. He'll stop with a triple to right center. Eddie Cranepool tried to catch the line drive, but as a result, when he couldn't get it, the ball caromed off the wall down toward the bullpen in right center field, and Tony Taylor is on third with a triple, his second three-base hit in the series. So the Phillies have two hits in the game off Carl Willie. They both have been three base hits. Johnny Callison tripled in the fourth inning with one down and then was thrown out at the plate by Al Moran. Now the Mets bring the left side of the infield in, the right side playing back deep. Play held up for a moment as the ball gets loose out of the Philadelphia Philly bullpen. We have a real good game going. Mets in front, 2 nothing. Phillies have a chance to pick up a run here with Tony Taylor on third and only one man down. Callison, good hitter, takes the first pitch high. One ball and no strikes. He lined out to the left fielder his first time up and then tripled to left center field his second time up. Now Carl has his sign using a full windup. The pitch is swung and missed. One ball, one strike on Johnny Callison. Callison has hit seven home runs and driven 21 runs in. Now the left side of the infield has been given instructions by Casey to drop back. Mets ready to concede a run to cut off the threat of a big inning. Down comes the pitch. Inside and high. A real blazer on the count. Two and one on Callison. Chris Short has finished warming up, and he's walking in now to the dugout. He'll be on to pitch for the Phillies in the last half of the sixth inning. Pitching two and one. Ground ball. Stabbed by Carl Willie. He holds the runner at third. Throws to first and down. ground ball. Good fielding by Carl Willie. He holds Tony Taylor on third and just a little bit further down from third base and Tony Taylor would have been hung up. Willie took a quick look to third but realized he didn't have a chance to get him. Ball was hit so sharply he didn't have time to wander very far down the line. Now there are two away and Tony Gonzalez hitting third in the order is up. Gonzalez has lined out to Snyder and left and reached on a fielder's choice. He's 0 for 2. Mets two and the Phillies nothing. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Here's the windup pitched by Willie. It's high. One ball and no strikes. One ball and no strikes to Tony Gonzalez. Tony Taylor on third, two down. That's over a call strike. One ball, one strike. Gonzalez standing deep in the batter's box. Slightly open stance, feet close together waiting. A drive foul hit hard down the left field line and up into the lower deck. Pittsburgh got three runs in the second to get back in the game at Chicago. Cubs leading the Pirates 4-3 to three at the end of two. St. Louis leading the Dodgers 2-0 after two innings on a two-run homer by Dick Groth. Henry Aaron has cracked his 21st home run of the year in the third inning at Milwaukee. So with the Braves hitting in the third, the Giants lead Milwaukee 3-2. to two. Right here, the count, one ball and two strikes on Tony Gonzalez. Here's the pitch on the way. A ground ball slashed to shortstop. Moran is up with it. The peg to first and the side is out. 
No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Second time in the game, the Phillies have come up with a one-out triple and failed to score. At the end of five and a half, the score of the New York Mets, two, and the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Now Chris Short has come on to hurl for the Philadelphia Phillies as the game moves to the last half of the sixth inning. Short has started 11 games for Philadelphia this year and relieved in five others. Has won one game and has been a losing pitcher on eight occasions. Altogether, he's worked 71 and two-thirds innings and given up 73 hits. Only the second time the Mets have faced him this year. A swing and a miss by Eddie Cranepool, strike one. The tall left-hander winds and pitches. Inside and low, one ball, one strike. Now Jim Hickman is trotting down toward the bullpen. He may be sent in defensively by Casey. Pitching one and one. A fastball taken right in there for a call strike. One ball and two strikes. Dallas Green, who started the ball game, attended the University of Delaware in Newark, Delaware, and Chris Short, who now is on in relief, also attended the University of Delaware. Short, 6-3 and a half. Delivers to Cranepool, a ground ball hit foul going down towards Sally Hemus. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. Last year, Short did a good job for Philadelphia. He won 11 and he lost 9. His earned run average was tidy, 3.4. Chris, a veteran of three years with the Phillies, last year was his first winning season. This year he's been having his problem. Eddie Crane pull hitting the Mets in front 2 0. We're in the top last half of the sixth inning. And it's outside. Eddie lays off two balls and two strikes. Eddie 0 for 2 in the game. New York, two runs on seven hits. Philadelphia, no runs on two hits. Some nifty clutch pitching by Carl Willey. Both of the hits by Philadelphia have been one-out triples. They have been unable to get either man home. Now Short looking in to pick up his sign from Clay Dalrymple. Left-hander against left-hander in the last of the sixth inning. A pop foul outside third. Scooting over Ruben Amaro. He has plenty of room. Makes the catch one man away. And right here, before Choo Choo Coleman steps in, we'll pause for station identification. You are tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Mets station. The time is 3.30. The temperature is 81 degrees. Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kanner. We're in the opener of the doubleheader in the polo grounds with the Mets in front 2-0. Choo Choo Coleman coming up now against lefty Chris Short. Choo Choo had two for two against Dallas Green. Here's the pitch on the way. An off-speed delivery that's in and over for a call strike. Now Rod Keneal jogs down to the bullpen and starts to warm up his arm along with Jim Hickman. Ruben Amaro in very close at third against Choo Choo Coleman. A bounded foul off to the left and a count of strike two. No game tomorrow. Jay Hook pitches against the Cubs on Tuesday night and Al Jackson on Wednesday afternoon. Exhibition game in Buffalo next Thursday night. Mets then open a brief road trip in Pittsburgh. They'll be there next weekend. Two strikes to count on Choo Choo Coleman. Bounced down the first baseline and going foul. I believe that ball came off of Choo Choo's foot. Charlie Neal is waiting on deck and then Al Moran as the Mets hope they can get it going again here in the home sixth inning. 
Duke Snyder drove home the first run back in the third inning. His single to right center scored Tim Harkness. Harkness had reached on a walk and taken second on a walk to Ron Hunt. And the second run crossed the plate in the fifth inning when Jimmy Pearsall hit his first National League home run. The 100th of his Major League career and living up to his promise, he went around the bases backwards. Now short, the tall lefty winds and pitches, misses the outside corner, one ball and two strikes. Yesterday was Old Timers Day, and the Mets went past the half-million mark in home attendance. We have another good crowd today in the Polo Grounds. Pitching one and two. Low and outside, two and two on 2-2 two -two Coleman. One out and nobody on. next homestand, the Mets are going to play their first Saturday night ball game. It'll be against Pittsburgh, and it will be date night and variety night. Fastball just missing, and now the string is out, three and two. Chris Short had a two-strike got on Choo Choo, but now a full count of three balls and two strikes. Short into his windup. Here's his payoff pitch to Coleman. A ground ball hit down to Roy Severs. Roy will make the unassisted play just in time. He misjudged the running speed of Choo Choo Coleman, and he just barely did get him. He started to throw the ball to the pitcher covering and then waved him off and started jogging toward first base. Then took a look at Choo Choo and saw how fast he was flying down the line, and Roy really had to turn it on to get there. Say, there's no time like the present, and what better way to use it than to pour yourself a tall, cold glass of Rhine Gold Extra Dry. You know, Rhine Gold is beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. Two outs and nobody on in the last half of the sixth inning. New York two, Philadelphia nothing. The batter is Charlie Deal. Charlie has reached on a fielder's choice and flied to short right field. He is 0 for 2. A ground ball hit down to first, a base hit between Seavers and the line. It bounces off the wall now. He's going to hold to a single. He may have to hurry to get back to play to first. He's back safely. Johnny Callison played that ball very well off the wall in right field. And Callison has one of the better throwing arms among the Major League outfielders. You can't take any liberties with him. So when Neal went swinging around first and saw Callison had the ball in his glove, he slammed on the brakes and hurried back to first base. Neal, a right-hand hitter, but he hits a lot to right field, and the Phillies were playing him over in that direction. Had the outfield been pulled any, playing him to pull a ball, he easily would have had a double. That was the eighth hit of the game for the New York Mets. The batter now is Al Moran. Al has reached on a fielder's choice and drawn a walk. Nothing for one. Chris Short up in pitching position. The left-hander delivers, inside and low, one ball and no strikes. Sally Amos and Cookie Ramagetto are talking it up on the coaching lines. Mets with a 2-0 lead, trying to add to it. A foul ball back into the screen, no play, one ball, one strike on Al Moran. This is the seventh game of the year between New York and Philadelphia, and each game has been a close one. Previous six games this year between the Mets and the Phillies, every game has been decided by either one or two runs. 
Now short eyes the runner at first. The one one pitch. Low and outside to Al Moran. Two and one. Charlie Neal on first base, two men down in the Mets' sixth inning. Bobby Wine is playing Al Moran over towards second, figuring him to hit up the middle. Pitch to him. A swing and a miss on a low-breaking delivery. Two balls and two strikes. At the end of three, the Cubs lead Pittsburgh four to three. They've played three in St. Louis now. The Cardinals lead the Dodgers 2-0 on a two-run homer by Dick Groat. Giants three and the Braves two at the end of three and a half. That's Sanford against Bond, both going for their tenth win. Reds have Houston 4 nothing at the end of seven and a half. That's the first game of a doubleheader in Cincinnati. Pitching two and two. Low and inside. Ball three. A full count three and two, and Charlie Neal will be running. Yankees five, Red Sox nothing after six and a half in Boston behind Jim Bowden. And the White Sox got two in the eighth inning to take the lead for the first time. They lead Cleveland two to one after seven and a half. Orioles one and the Twins nothing at the end of three. That's Barber against Cornelius in relief of Dick Stigman. Later today, the Senators and the Angels on the West Coast. Now there goes Neal. It's in the dirt for ball four. Charlie Neal around second is going to try for third. And there'll be no peg... All the way to second base goes Al Moran. On three and two, Chris Short uncorked a wild pitch. Al Moran, who runs very well, went all the way to second, and Charlie Neal went from first to third. It was on three and two. So Carl Willie comes up to hit now with two down and two in scoring position. Chris Short retired the first two men to hit here in the last of the sixth inning, but then Neal nicked him for a ground single down the right field line. And on three and two, a wild pitch uncorked, and the runners wind up on second and third. Mets leading two to nothing. Carl Willie hoping now to weigh in on his own behalf. Right-hander Johnny Boozer has started to warm up in the Philly bullpen. Chris Short is out of his wind up his pitch. Way outside, it's ball one. And that brings Gene Mock out of the dugout, and he's going to make a trip to the mound. Right now, it's left-hander against right-hander. Mock is looking toward his bullpen as he crosses the line, and this is going to be all for Chris Short. We'll have a new pitcher coming in the ball game With a count of one ball and no strikes on Carl Willie. Willie will belong to the relief pitcher, John Boozer, who is checking into the game. So Short is taken out after pitching two-thirds of one inning. At the moment, has given up no runs, allowed one hit, walked one, and uncorked one wild pitch. The Chicago Cubs open a two-game series against the New York Mets on Tuesday night. Jay Hook will pitch the Tuesday night game, and Alvin Jackson will try for his seventh win of the year in the day game on Wednesday afternoon. In the fourth inning at Wrigley Field, Pittsburgh got one run to tie up the Chicago Cubs. That game is now 4-4 at the end of three and a half. Harvey Haddix is the third Pittsburgh hurler in the game. Glenn Hobby is in there for Chicago. Ernie Brolio pitching for St. Louis. Bob Miller relieved Johnny Padres in the first inning. And St. Louis leading the Dodgers 2-0 on Groats' two-run homer. In the game at Milwaukee, the Giants lead the Braves 3-2 at the end of four. Harvey Keene and Tom Haller have homered for the National League champions. Henry Arrod, who leads the major leagues in home runs, cracked his 21st of the year. It came in the third inning with nobody on. In the game is Jack Sanford against Warren Spahn, both trying to win their 10th of the year. At Cincinnati, Johnny Edwards hit a three-run homer in the third. Reds got four runs in the third inning, and that's all the scoring. They're now in the last of the eighth inning with Cincinnati leading Houston four to nothing. 
Bob Perky is the pitcher against Russ Kimmer in relief. Down out for Stazen. In the eighth inning now, Roger Maris has homered for the New York Yankees. Maris is hot now. That's his 14th home run of the year. Yankees now lead the Red Sox 6 to nothing in the top of the eighth inning. Jim Bouton going for his 10th win against only two losses. Chicago 2, Cleveland 1 after 7.5. Old Sarge Hoyt Wilhelm has relieved Herbert. Ted Abernathy has replaced Jack Creeley. Baltimore 1 and Minnesota nothing at the end of 3. Now we're set to go. Right-hander John Boozer is on in relief. Runners on 2nd and 3rd and 2 down. And the pitcher, Carl Willey, is batting. Now the windup. And the pitch by Boozer, a curve, the slow, one ball, uh, two balls, and no strike. Gene Mock not wasting a moment to make a pitching change here and get a right-hander in to face Carl Willie, because even though the pitcher is up with a score two to nothing, New York, he felt the ball game might well hang in the balance if these two men scored. Fast ball for a strike on the outside corner, two and one to Carl Willie. Boozer cranking up. In comes his pitch. A swing and a miss. Strike two. Two and two. Johnny Boozer has been in six games. One man and lost two. He has given up fewer hits than innings pitched. In 23 and two-thirds innings, he has allowed 18 hits. Swing and a miss. He struck him out and the side is retired. So Boozer comes out of the bullpen to fan Carl Willey. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on. Those are getting credit for one-third of the inning. Now six innings complete in the polo grounds of the opener of the doubleheader. And the score at the end of six, the New York Mets two, and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Now coming over from television to detail the action for you on radio the rest of the way, our colleague Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Bob Murphy. We'll be going here to the top half of the seventh inning as Carl Willie takes his time now. Having been the last batter up, he goes to the dugout to get his glove before continuing on out to the mound, which gives us a chance to mention the fact that there is a record available of the Mets' official song. It's a song, of course, that is new this year. Uh, meet the Mets, and uh, there's a 45 RPM recording available with a vocal version on one side and a strictly instrumental version on the other. If you'd like a copy of the record, send $1 to Met Official Song, Polo Ground, New York, 39, New York. $1 to Met Official Song, Polo Ground, New York, 39, New York. On the top of the seventh, it is Roy Sievers up to lead off. Roy's been up twice without a hit. Facing Carl Willie. Carl looks in, gets his side from Choo Choo Coleman into the windup, and here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike one. This is the first game of a Sunday doubleheader at the Polo Grounds in New York. A beautiful summer's day. Again, Willie is set to work. Pitch is swung on as a high pop toward first. It's in foul territory now, and Harkness goes over and makes the catch. Barely foul. One away. Nobody on base, and Don Demeter coming up. He has struck out swinging and grounded out to first base. The Mets are leading by a score of two to nothing. Demeter had a ninth inning home run yesterday here at the Polo Grounds. Off the facade of the upper deck, almost out of the ballpark. It was his 12th home run of this season. He was obtained by the Phillies from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Willie with a windup and a pitch. 
swung on and has a pop toward third. Charlie Neal comes across near the mound and makes the catch. Handle hit. Two away, nobody on. Catcher Clay Dalrymple's coming up. Dalrymple is batting 254. He has slide out to center and been hit by a pitch ball today. In the second game here this afternoon, Ryan Duran is scheduled to do the pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies. Tracy Stallard is scheduled to pitch for the New York Mets. Here's a swing and a ground ball foul. Phoenix Lowry makes a stab at it on the coaching lines at first, and it continues right on out into the warning track. Strike one count to Clay Dalruffle. Just a little breeze stirring here at the Polo Grounds today. Now, pitch that is low for a ball. It's one and one. First game of a doubleheader, of the Cincinnati Reds have shut out the Houston Colt 45 by a score of four to nothing. Reds had four runs on seven hits and one error. The Colt 45 no runs, only four hits and no errors. And Bob Perky through the four hitter. Here's the pitch in there for a call strike. So as of right now, pending the outcome of other games, of course, Cincinnati Reds were only two games out of first place as they've moved ahead of the Dodgers. Here's a swing and a high pop toward short. Moran waves everybody away, shades his eyes with the glove and makes the catch. So in the top of the seventh, the Phillies got no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of six and a half innings, it's the Mets two, the Phillies nothing. Well, here it is, the seventh inning, and uh, you know what that calls for, Ralph Kiner. Yes, sir, Lindsay, the good old seventh inning stretch. And you know what that calls for. Yes, sir, fine, cold, Ryan Gold. What a good idea. Ryan Gold, extra dry. But really, any nice time calls for Ryan Gold. It makes any wonderful day just a little more wonderful. But that figures, because Ryan Gold is the dry beer. Yes, two little words, extra dry, tell you why Ryan Gold is the happy choice of millions. Extra dry tells you Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costly way to taste brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. That's why millions say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. So why not join them? Enjoy a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold as we bring you more of the baseball action with Lindsey Nelson. All right, Ralph, and Jimmy Pearsall is coming up to lead off for the Mets. Here's all in Lavin the procedures when he hit a home run to right field here at the polo ground in the fifth inning and then in making the track around the bases. Uh, when he got down close to first, he could see it was in there, so he just turned around and backed around the bases. Now he steps in. I got a question for you. If Pearsall would hit a home run right now and run from third to second to first to home, would that take one run off the scoreboard? <laughs> well, I tell you, I wouldn't bet he wouldn't do it. Here's Johnny Boozer into the windup and the pitch. He's in there for a call strike. Is that a Ryan Gold riddle? Yeah, that's a Ryan Gold riddle. I'll let you know. <laughs> Again, Boozer is set to work the pitch, and it's in there for a call strike. Two strike count to Jimmy Pearsall. He's in and waiting. That pitch is a call strike three. Caught a corner. Pearsall stands there a moment, stares at the plate, and comes on back. Second strike out for Johnny Boozer. Brings up Tim Harkness. Nothing for two in a walk today. Harkness has scored one run. The Mets are leading him this game by a score of two to nothing. And it's Gil Hodges Foundation Day here at Polo Grounds. Here's a wind-up in the pitch. That's outside for ball. Frank Sikori is calling balls and strikes. Bill Joukowsky at first, Paul Fire at second, and Benny Smith around at third. Again the pitch from Boozer. Fastball misses low, and it's 2-0. Oh. Boozer 
Musa looks in for a sign from catcher Clay Dalrymple. Starts the motion. Pitch misses high, and it tosses to three balls and no strikes to Harkness with Ron Hunt on deck. Harkness waiting for the 3-0 pitch. He holds up and takes ball four. He swung his body, didn't break the wrist, and goes down to first with a base on ball. That's the first walk issued by Boozer. Gives the Mets a runner at first base with one man out and Ron Hunt coming up. And a single walk and grounded out today. As of this moment, the New York Mets are trailing the Houston Colt 45s in the National League standings by only one half game. Boozer now is up and set. Here's the pitch low for ball. 1-0. Mets got one run in the third inning. They got another in the fifth inning and lead here by a score of two to nothing. In the early innings, they were hitting Dallas Green well enough, but uh, could not manage to push across a run until the third. Agnes takes the lead, and Johnny Boozer steps off the rubber. Well, the bugle blowers are out in mass here this afternoon at Polo Ground. Now pitch, and it's in there for a call strike. 1-1. One, one. Duke Snyder is kneeling on deck for the Mets. Ron Hunt's batting average at this moment is 271. He has the highest Mets batting average in this lineup today. That pitch is high. Two and one. No game tomorrow for the Mets. It's an off day. Cubs will be in on Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. Now Hunt is in and waiting. Harkness takes his lead at first in the 2-1 pitch. Harkness is running. The pitch is high. That's a throw to second, and he is safe at second base. Tony Taylor sets the peg, but Harkness slid in safely and gets the stolen base. Three balls and one strike to count out of Ron Hunt. So with one away, the Mets now have a runner at second. Loser looks in for a sign as Harkness leads off the bag at second base. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and thrown up right out in front of the plate. Taken by Dow Rappel, holds the runner, throws the first in time. No advance by Argus. That'll bring up Snyder. They went two to three of his scoring. The Duke single to drive in the first net run in the third. He is two for three today. United batting average right now is 217. 11 home runs and 26 runs batted in. Snyder's going to be intentionally walked with first base open and Ed Cranco coming up next. Action in the bullpen of the Philadelphia Phillies and it's Dennis Bennett. Just placed on the active roster yesterday. He had been injured in an automobile accident before the start of the season. Intentional pass to Duke Snyder as he goes to first. We pause for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, 810 on your dial, where the time is two and a half minutes before four o'clock. The temperature 83 degrees. 
This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Gunner and Bob Murphy at the polo grounds. And now Snyder is coming off the bag at first toward the dugout. And Rod Janeel comes out of the bullpen to run for Snyder at first. Janeel running for Snyder. Gene Mock is coming to the mound. Dennis Bennett is uh, throwing in the bullpen, and the sign has gone to the bullpen as Mock reaches and gets that ball right out of the glove of pitcher Johnny Boozer. He looked like Fred Hutchison the way he reached for that one. Dennis Bennett was only placed on the active roster yesterday, and this is his first appearance of the season. He, of course, showed great, great promise last year and was injured in an automobile accident before the start of this year. So he is coming on now. He uh, was in the accident along with pitcher Bill Gibson. He received a broken ankle. Gibson got a broken arm. Last year, he had a record of nine wins and nine losses. He was in 31 games, had a 3.82 earned run average. Dennis Bennett making the walk in from the bullpen now. In relief of John Boozer. And Bennett is the fourth Philly pitcher of the day. He will be facing Ed Cranepool here. Bennett is a left-hander. Situation, two men out. The Mets have runners at first and second. The Mets lead by a score of two to nothing. National League at the end of four and a half. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates four and Chicago Cubs four. At the end of four innings, it's the Cardinals two and the Dodgers one. At the end of four and a half innings, it's the Giants three and the Milwaukee Braves two. And the Cincinnati Reds shut out the Houston Colts 45, four to nothing in the first game of a doubleheader. At Bob Perky threw a four-hitter today, and that is good news for Cincinnati followers. In the first game of a doubleheader, the White Sox have defeated the Cleveland Indians 2-1. Ray Herbert is the winner with help from Hoyt Wilhelm in the eighth inning. Herbert is now 7-4. and four. Jim Hickman is being brought in from the bullpen area now to the dugout of the New York Mets. He may very well uh, be sent up here to bat for Ed Cranepool. Since uh, manager Gene Mock went to the left-hand pitcher, Casey may go to the right-hand batter. The end of eight innings of play... The Yankees, six, and the Boston Red Sox, nothing. Bowden is going for the Yankees. Wilson started for Boston. LeMay in the second, early in the seventh. Nichols in the ninth. Roger Maris homered in the eighth with nobody on for the Yankees. It is Maris' 14th home run of this season. Now Jim Hickman is being announced as batting for Ed Cranepool. strategy are spinning here between uh, the young manager and the old manager, Gene Mock and Casey Stengel. The Mets have a 2 nothing lead. Hickman steps in. Runners first and second. Bennett is set, and here's his first pitch of the year. It's a check. It is outside, and uh, coming on back, runners moving up as his first pitch missed everything. It's a wild pitch. Hickman had sort of moved about a little, and for a moment we were under the impression that he might have kicked it, but he did not. That pitch was outside, missed everything, and came on back, and so Dennis Bennett's first pitch of the season. Is a wild pitch, and runners have moved up. Harkness to third base, and Keneal to second. Action in the bullpen. Jack Balshan and Cal McLeish now throwing for the Philadelphia Phillies. Conference at the mound as shortstop Bobby Wine has come over. Second baseman Tony Taylor has come over. Clay Dalrymple has gone out.
Choo-choo Coleman is on deck for the Mets. Hickman in and waiting. And here's the pitch. It's high for a ball. It's 2-0. and Agnes at third. Keneal running for Snyder at second. With the windup, here is Dennis Bennett. And the pitch is high. Three balls, no strikes. Bennett, of course, had been working out with the team regularly before being placed on the active roster yesterday when Jack Hamilton was sent down to make room for Bennett on the roster. Jay Hook is up and throwing in the bullpen now for the Mets. Here's a swing and a miss. It's three and one. Two men out in this situation. And it's pitch swung on and has a high foul ball down the left field line. Being given a run back there and it's going into the upper deck out of play. Ruben Amaro, the third baseman, went right down in behind the stands where they jut out in short left field. He was racing back there, but this one landed in the upper deck. Foul ball. So the count is full now. Three and two to Jim Hickman. And Frank Thomas has come out to the on-deck circle swinging bats. If uh, Hickman keeps it alive, Thomas then is the likely batter for left-hand batter. Choo-choo Coleman, who is due up next. The Mets lead 2 nothing. Now the payoff pitch. Swung on, and it's a ground ball. It's smothered by Amaro. He'll have a long throw to first, and he is out. Safe at first base, and a run is scored. He's safe at first base. As Seavers came off the back, tried to get back. A run is scored, and now Keneal is playing cat and mouse down the line. And Seavers finally throws the ball to Dal Rebel at the plate, and Keneal now goes back. And Gene Mock has come out. He has charged Bill Jukowski. Roy Seavers has challenged Jukowski. Amaro is over. Bobby Wyan is over. Don Demeter came all the way in from left field to try to cover third base, seeing that there was nobody there. But the Mets scored a run on the play as it was a smash smothered by Amaro at third. He scrambled to his feet, threw on the first. He threw full Seavers off the bag. Seavers went off, got the ball, tried to get back. Bill Jukowski, the umpire at first, with a little delay, signal safe. In the meantime, of course, Tim Harkness had crossed the bag with the third Met run of the day, and he scored as an error. Tries to get Ruben Amaro on the throw. So, Keneal moved on to third, and Jim Hickman is on at first. They're runners first and third. Gene Mock is slowly coming back across the infield area now. Frank DeCoy, who is the senior umpire, had uh, gone down to first. Now Frank Thomas is coming into the ballgame to bat for Choo Choo Coleman. Now the right-hand batter being set up by Casey. have managed to push across one here in this inning and lead 3 nothing. And as Thomas has announced now, Mark, uh, having gone to the dugout, commutes once more to the mound. He had Cal McLeish throwing out there and Jack Balshin throwing out there. So after Thomas was announced, he's going to go out and talk it over and may very well go to uh, right-hand pitcher. Gene Mark uh, is a man who dabbles in the strategy market frequently. And we're going to get a pitcher here at Dennis Bennett. It's going to be removed after having pitched to only one man. It will be the ace of the relief staff of the Philadelphia Phillies, Jack Balchin, coming in here now to face Frank Thomas. Balchin has been in 31 games. He has a record of five victories and three losses. His record against the Mets, 0-2. And he lost on successive days the last time the Phils were here in relief both times. 
by identical scores of three to two. That run that scored, of course, was Bennett pitching was charged against Johnny Boozer. Still a conference at uh, the mound. Last night at the Old Timers Dinner, Tom Meany, the director of public relations for the New York Metro the Master Ceremonies, he introduced manager Gene Mark of the Phils, who made uh, a talk. And then, when he finished, Tom Meany said, manager Gene Mock made that talk in a lot less time than it takes him to change a picture. Mock is a disciple of the deliberate and somewhat dramatic style of management. Tom Maney claimed that when Gene Mock was first signed by Blanche Rickey back during the war years, that he was asked what had been his greatest thrill and it was presumed that his answer would be a home run or a base hit here or there, and that uh, he said being the valedictorian of his high school graduating class. We're going to get uh, a catching change here also. Bob Oldest is coming in to catch. Oldest is going to catch Balchin, so it'll be Oldest batting ninth and Balchin batting sixth. If you're keeping a scorecard... Jack Balshan will bat six, and Bob Oldis will bat ninth. As the battery change is being made, made here at the same time, that makes it possible. And that's all a part of the strategy of the change, of course, to uh, be able to get the catcher up there. In the eighth inning, he will be due up third, instead of the pitcher who would be due up third. All right, Frank Thomas steps into the batter's box. Runners at first and third. Two men out. The Mets are leading by a score of three to nothing. Frank has a batting average of 244 with four home runs and 19 runs batted in. Ocean is up and set. Pitches far and has a foul ball looped in the left. Could drop in. It's going to drop in for a base hit. Can he get the score? Hickman on the way to third. The third to third, and he's safe at third base. As Ruben Amaro was trying to destroy Hickman, but Coach Cookie Lavagetta had Hickman hit the dirt and he slid in safely. Thomas is on with a Texas League single into left center field. The Mets lead 4 nothing. Give Thomas a run batted in. Charlie Neal is coming up. Runners at first and third. Still two men out, two runs in this inning for the Mets. That run also charged against Johnny Boozer. So two were charged against Dallas Green, two against Johnny Boozer. And we're going to get now Al Jackson coming in to run for Frank Thomas. Jackson, a uh, pitcher with fine speed, is coming in to run for Frank Thomas at first base. Waiting. Jack Balchin with the pitch, and this one's in there for a call strike. Now again, Balchin is set, and the pitch gets all the way by on another run. It's coming home as Jim Hickman crosses the plate. Jackson moves to second. That'll be scored as a wild pitch charged against Jack Balchin. A wild pitch. That one hits the dirt well outside. Came all the way back in the Mets lead by a score of five to nothing. With a runner at second. Two men out and a count of one and one to Charlie Neal. That one is charged against Dennis Bennett. with three runs in here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Al 
Jackson leads off the bag at second. The 1-1 pitch. It swung on. It's a foul ball. Off and out of play to the right side. One and two now. New York Yankees have shut out the Boston Red Sox 8 to nothing for the Yanks. Eight runs on ten hits and no errors. For the Red Sox, no runs on four hits and one error. The winning pitcher is Bowden. He is now 10 and 2, and the loser is Earl Wilson. He is now 6 and 6. Right here, the Mets lead by a score of 5 to nothing over the Phils. Pitch to Neal is low for a ball. It's 2 2. Jack Boston with the pitch. Breaking ball swung on line. Foul. Off the wall and left. Now Jackson was all the way to third as Charlie Neal hit that one well out in front and pulled it foul against the wall in left field. 2-2 two, two count. Checks again. Swing on a foul ball. Swing on a breaking ball. Down holds it two and two. This is the first game of a scheduled doubleheader here at the Polo Grounds this afternoon. And the Met fans are enjoying themselves in this one. As you can doubtless tell, here is a pitch that is a call strike three to Charlie Neal. So Boston retires the side, but the Mets got three runs on one hit. There was one error, two wild pitches, and one man left. So at the end of seven innings of play, it is a Mets five and the Phillies nothing. And now, let's check on scores of other games around the major leagues. First in the National League, at the end of five full innings, the Chicago Cubs lead the Pittsburgh Pirates six to four. The Cubs will be in here at the Polo Grounds on Tuesday night and again on Wednesday afternoon. Vernon Law started for the Pirates. Tommy Siskin the first. Harvey Attix in the second. Glenn Hobby pitching for the Cubs. Ryan Santo home in the fifth with one man on for the Cubs. The end of five innings of play. It's the Dodgers four and the Cardinals three. Padres started for the Dodgers. Bob Miller in the first inning. Ernie Brolio is going for the Cards. Dick Grote has homered for the Cards. And Jim Gilliam has homered for the Dodgers. The end of four and a half innings to play. It's the Giants three and the Milwaukee Braves two. Jack Sanford started for the Giants. Gaylord Perry in the fifth. Stanek in the fifth. Warren Spahn is going for Milwaukee. Harvey Keene is homered. Tom Haller is homered. Henry Aaron is homered. And Warren Spahn is homered. That is Spahn's 33rd career home run as he leads pitchers in that department. Cincinnati defeated Houston four to nothing. In the first game of the double header, Bob Perkey throwing a four-hitter. Umbright was the loser, Johnny Edwards. Homer and the third with two men on. The second game, it'll be Chris Zachary going against Joe Nuxall. The American League, the Yankees beat the Boston Red Sox 8 to nothing. Bowden over Wilson. White Sox beat Cleveland 2 to 1. Herbert over Kralik. That's the first game of a doubleheader. He had the four and a half. The Orioles beat the Minnesota Twins 2 to nothing. Barber for Baltimore. Stigman started for Minnesota. Four Nealers in the fourth. The end of a half inning, the Tigers nothing. The Kansas City A is nothing. Lolich against Drabowski. And Washington at Los Angeles in a later start. Willie's pitch is swung on, and there's a ground ball to short. Second and played on over in time as Moran throws out Bobby Wine to open up the top half of the eighth inning. Rod Keneal stays in the ball game in left field for the New York Mets, and Jim Hickman stays in in right field, and Norm Sherry is the catcher. At Milwaukee, the Braves got seven runs in the bottom half of the fifth inning, and it is now the Braves nine, the Giants three at the end of five. Ruben Amaro is due up here for the Phils, and uh, he just now comes over to uh, get the bat and come on out. And catcher Bob Oldis will be due up next. Top of the eighth with the New York Mets leading the Phillies by a score of five to nothing. with 
one man out, nobody on base. Carl Willie into the windup and the pitch. Check swing foul ball to the right side. It's out of play. Strike one count. Through seven innings, the Mets have five runs on nine hits, no errors. The Phillies have no runs on two hits, one error. There's a swing and a high pop foul, and Sherry might have a play. He gets rid of the mask, comes back into the warning track, pounds the glove, and makes the catch. Ruben Navarro has fouled out to the catcher, and Bob Oldis is coming up. Oldis is batting 227. He has two runs batted in. Dips into the smooth pitching motion. And it's in there for a call. Strike one. Again, Carl set to work. Swing out on this. Two strike count to hold this with two men out and nobody on base. two-strike pitch. Breaking ball and it is in there for a call strike three. And Bob Oldis argues the point with Frank Sikori, but it's a strikeout for Carl Willie, number five for him. He gets the side out in order in the top of the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. In the seven and a half innings of play, it's the Mets five, the Phillies nothing. And now a word from Cool Cigarettes. Are you thinking of changing to a menthol cigarette? Well, don't make a disappointing change. Make the right change. Come up to cool. Here's why. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough unless you're smoking cool. You're not smoking cool enough till you come up to cool. Cool menthol magic, brightness taste, refreshing all day through. Feel extra cool and safe in your throat as cool comes through for you. Enjoy the extra coolness you feel in your throat when you smoke cool. Enjoy that bright, clear taste all day long. Come up to cool. Cool with the pure white filter or cool without filter. We're going now to the bottom half of the eighth inning, and coming in here to carry you along is a fellow who was introduced at the all timers dinner last at the old timers dinner last night as a young timer at the old timers dinner. I never did know just exactly what that meant, Ralph Kiner. Well, it cost me plenty. I know that, Lindsay. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Mets batting. They lead five nothing. First man up against Jack Balsham will be Al Moran. Al, a shortstop, right hand batter. The first pitch is a curveball. Look at strike one. Balsham, the fifth pitcher, used by manager Gene Mott. Here's the windup and the one strike pitch to Moran. The check and the swing, the ball off of the bat, foul for strike two. Al has walked twice and hit into a forced play, so he is 0 for 1. Now the two strike pitch. Curveball, look at, call strike three. So Balsham picks up his second strikeout. That is strikeout number eight for the Philadelphia Philly pitchers. And it will bring up Carl Willie. And listen to this hand. Carl Willie with a shutout going, coming to bat here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Mets lead five to nothing. They have nine hits. The Phillies have two. Willie is 0 for 3 in the game, and the first pitch to the right-hand batter is a curve looked at strike one. Balsham now into the windup and the one strike delivery. A swing and a miss, strike two. 
Wilson came in the game in relief of Dennis Bennett. He pitched to Frank Thomas, gave up a base hit, and then struck out two. There's a curve hit on the ground in the hall. Here goes the shortstop. He juggles the ball. A throw, not a dime. It scored an error on Bobby Wine, the shortstop. That is the second error of the bar game for the Phillies. The other error set up three unearned runs for the Mets in the bottom half of the seventh. And with one out, Jimmy Pearsall comes to bat for the fifth time. Jimmy with two hits, one of them a home run, his 100th Major League home run. And the first pitch to Jimmy, a butt attempt, and the ball is missed for strike one. Carl Willie at first base, not wearing a jacket, and he's not being held on by Roy Seavers. Mets have five runs, the Phillies none. Here's the one strike delivery, a swing and a miss at a curveball, strike two. Jimmy batting 224. Pearsall looks at the next delivery from Jack Balsham. It's low, one ball, two strikes. Second game will be worked by Tracy Stallard for the Mets. He'll be opposed by Ryan Duren. Now at one, two, Balsham throws low in the dirt. A check in the swing by Pearsall. Ball two. Sidearm curveball, a ball bouncing right near the plate. Picked up by the catcher, Bob Aldis, and Carl Woolley at first base stays. Two balls, two strikes. Balls from back to Pearsall, and there's a fly ball down the right field line. A long run by Callison. He can't get to it. The ball is off of the wall. And now the umpire indicating a two-base hit. Moving over to third base, Carl Woolley. The ball bounced high up near the foul pole after hitting in the warning track area. And the ball was touched by one of the fans in the stands. And the first base umpire, Bill Joukowsky, immediately signed two base hit. So the Mets now have runners at second and third. Jimmy Parasol with his third hit in the ball game. And with one out, the batter will be Tim Harkness. scored two runs, although he hasn't had a hit in the ball game. He has walked twice and scored both of those times. He also has struck out and grounded out, so he is over two. Infield being pulled in. Here's the first pitch to Harkness. Low ball one. ball, no strikes. Balsham back to the plate, and the pitch is on the inside corner. A fastball for strike one. One ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one delivery. A swing and a curveball. Strike two. Carl Woolley at third base. At second base, Jimmy Pearsall. Mets lead 5 to nothing. They're batting in the eighth inning with one man out. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch to Harkness. Low for ball two. Jack Balsham working to Tim Harkness. Jack, the fifth pitcher here is by Gene Mock. Dallas Green, the starting pitcher. He went five innings, gave up two runs. Johnny Boozer gave up two runs, and Dennis Bennett gave up one. Now back again, and it's low for ball three. Tim Harkness now all the way down the line, three balls and two strikes with Jack Balsham, the on-deck batter Ron Hunt. the windup and the pitch to Harkness. A swing and a miss, strike three. 
Now with two men out, Jack Balsam picking up his third strikeout in relief. The batter will be Ron Hunt. Carl Willie at third base. Jimmy Pearsall at second. Ron singled his first time up, then he walked his second. After that, he grounded out twice. And the first pitch to the right-hand batter is swung on. Strike one. Curveball on the outside part of the plate. Balsam primarily a curveball pitcher. He throws a sinking fastball. And his big point is the fact that he can get the breaking pitch over at any time. Now the one strike pitch. Curve again. A swing and a miss. Strike two. Both curveballs on the outside part of the plate. Ron Hunt asking Frank Sikori if the pitch was on the plate. Sikori nodded yes. Two strike count. Two men out, bottom half of the eighth inning. The Mets on top, 5 nothing. Now Balsam back to the plate with a fastball. It's inside, it hits him. Oh, no, it doesn't. Rod Hunt started the first base, and Frank Sikori said the ball did not hit him. That was about one-third of the way to first base when Sikori called him back. So it's one ball and two strikes. Ron indicating that the pitch hit his uniform, not him, but Sikori said no. One ball, two strikes. Runners at second and third, and the pitch back to Hunt. Curve ball, he struck him out. So Jack Balsham picks up his fourth strikeout since coming in the ball game in the seventh inning with two men out. That's strikeout number ten in the ball game for the Philly pitchers. And in the inning for the Mets, no runs on one hit. There was one error. And two men were left on. And the score at the end of eight innings of play. The Mets have five runs on ten hits. They have left ten men on. The Phillies have no runs and two hits. And they have left three men on. Moving out of the top of the ninth inning, coming up for the Phillies will be the top of their batting order, Tony Taylor, Johnny Callison, and Tony Gonzalez. Well, it won't be long before the All-Star game will be coming up. And following the All-Star break, the Mets will have two big series coming up. The Dodgers will move right in on Wednesday night after the All-Star game for a makeup game not on the original schedule, July 10th. That'll be Wednesday night. They'll also play Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday afternoon. After the Dodgers, the Giants come in for a Wednesday night game July 17th, Thursday night July 18th. And, of course, you know that whenever the Mets and Dodgers play or the Mets and Giants play, it's always a big time here at the Polo Grounds. So if I were you, I'd make your ticket purchases early. Make sure you get good seats to watch the big series coming up between the Dodgers and the Giants with the Mets. Tickets are on sale at three convenient locations, downtown at Grand Central Station at the foot of the Vanderbilt Avenue ramp there. Also Pennsylvania Station in the Long Island waiting room. You may pick up your tickets right here at the Polo Grounds seven days a week at the advanced reservation window located on the 155th side of 8th Avenue. And ticket reservations may be made at any of the Howard Clothing stores throughout the New York area. You may mail in for your ticket purchases. Box seats at $350, reserve seats $250. Simply send the correct amount of money plus $0.25 cents additionally to take care of the mailing and handling charges to Ticket Manager, Polo Grounds, New York 39, New York. Top of the ninth inning, Carl Willie going on a shutout. He has a two-hitter going, and he'll be working to the top of the batting order, Tony Taylor. Tony has one of the two hits. He tripled to right field in the sixth inning. The other base hit was by Johnny Callison, who tripled to left field. In the fourth inning, Johnny Callison, the on-deck batter. Carl Willey has pitched two previous two-hitters. One against the Giants and the other against the Cubs. Here's the first pitch of the night. And it's looked at strike one. Staying corrected, he pitched a three-hitter against the Giants, and that was a shutout. One strike count to Tony Taylor, right-hand batter. And here's the pitch back to the plate, a fastball. He threw it right by him, a swing, strike two.
Now Carl into the windup, and here's the two-strike delivery. High for ball one. Fast ball up above the shoulders. One ball, two strikes. Mets have five runs on ten hits. Phillies have no runs and two hits. Carl Willey pitching to his 28th man here in this ball game. Now the swing and the one-two pitch. Fast ball, it's a foul tip, strike three. A six-strike out for Carl Willey. He now has one out here in the ninth inning, and we'll pause for station identification. 810 on the radio dial, WGY Schenectady. The time is 434, the temperature 80 degrees. Ralph Geiner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from the Polar Grounds. Carl Willey with one out in the top of the ninth inning, a five-run lead. And the batter now, Johnny Callison. John, one for three. And the first pitch to the left-hand batter smashed down the short. A good play by Moran. The throw to first base, out number two. Two men down. The batter will be Tony Gonzalez. Tony is 0 for 3. His first time up, he lined out the left field. Then he hit into a fielder's choice out with a runner at third base. The play made it home to pick up an out on Johnny Callison trying to score. And he also granted back to the shortstop his third time up. There's the first pitch to Gonzalez, a left-hand batter. A fastball, strike one. Willie back low, a slider that moves Gonzalez away from the batter's box. One ball, one strike. Carl Willie, a long look at the signs. Two men out here in the ninth inning, and the 1-1 pitch has popped up, but it's going to go out of play. Going down the left field side and out of play, strike two. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. The pitch back to Gonzalez. Bounce back to the mound. Carl Willie will have a shutout. There it is. Pitts to only 33 batters and picking up the first win for the Mets in this doubleheader, five to nothing. 